you know, Area 51 covers the aerial espionage element of the CIA, the science and technology. The CIA was responsible for putting the first satellite in space, the Corona program. Dr. Bud Whelan, who I interviewed for Area 51, remarkable intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance programs. Like, why does no one know about Area 51? What, what? Why is Area 51 so secret? I mean, when I wrote the book Area 51, the word Area 51 was still classified. Really? You couldn't say it. I went to the CIA and I was told by my minder, if you say a certain word and number, you will be asked to leave. It was classified. It only became unclassified when President Obama spoke about it publicly. Oh, really? He just mentioned it. And then it was unclassified. Right? In Area 51, I learned about something called strategic deception, which is a CIA concept, okay? The CIA had a, was building spy planes out at Area 51. The U-2 spy plane, which was going to spy on the Soviet Union in the 50s from above and figure out whether they were preparing for nuclear war. And the plane was built at Area 51 because no one could know about it. It flew at 70,000 feet. It was out of range of any surface-to-air missiles. Um, I interviewed the first man who flew over the Soviet Union in a U-2, Hervey Stockman. And he took pictures with these massive CIA cameras that, you know, came back to the agency. It was wet film and allowed the CIA to understand what was actually going on on the ground in Soviet Russia. It was photographing military bases. So the spy plane was being built, and it was so secret, like only the president knew about it. At the same time, nuclear weapons were being exploded next door, right? So Area 51, and then over at Area 23 was where the, the, the bombs were going off. And there was a, I was interviewing all the engineers who were building the spy plane. And Bob Murphy was one of the lead engineers, and he told me this story about strategic deception. So he and others would go to the ranch, that's what they called Area 51, then they'd fly back to Burbank, California, where they all lived for the weekends to be with their families. And they would take this shuttle back and forth. And one day, um, they went to a big party the night before, and Bob Murphy got drunk. He was not a guy who gets drunk, but he got drunk. He missed the shuttle. And he was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose my job. I'm in trouble. And he opens the doors, how he described it to me, to like, you know, go out and deal with this. And there's an FBI agent like about to knock on the door. And they tell, and the guy turns white as a ghost because Bob Murphy was supposed to be on that flight. So he was on the flight manifest and it crashed into Mount Charleston on the way there and everyone was dead. Okay. So that is just a dr dramatic thing to begin with, but here's how it ties up with strategic deception. The CIA learns that it's aircraft full of U-2 engineers, pot designers, all these incredibly important people on this top secret project are dead. They just crashed into Mount Charleston. What are they going to do? How are they going to keep this secret? All the news stations are racing up to the top of the mountain to try to get to the crash site. Oh my God, this is going to be, the project's going to be blown open. What are we going to do? So they quickly rope off the areas. They do the damage control to the best that they can. But they're spinning, and I have all the declassified documents from that part of it, learning how worried they are. There's no, almost no doubt the project's going to be revealed. The U-2 program is going to be no more because once the Soviets know about it, it's off. And instead, the press comes up with a story. The press reports that it's all these atomic scientists working on this secret new weapon. They just completely make this up in essence, right? It's this new weapons project. And that's what they're all doing. Who knows who put what bug in someone's ear? And so that's the story that comes out. And the CIA is like, perfect. And what I, the story explains that there are two kinds of strategic deception. There's cover. When you say, like Bob Murphy said to his wife, I'm just an engineer working out there on some television systems. That's cover. That was his cover. He didn't say I'm working on the U-2 spy plane. And then there's disinformation. When the press reports that the crash was full of a bunch of atomic engineers working on a secret weapons program. And those are both kinds of strategic deception. 